was to undertake an evaluation of the garden to table program in, in um, the pilot schools where it had taken place. And so the schools were he um, heavily invested in the garden to table program. The principals were keen, but the principals didn't make a very good job of um, then engaging the classroom teachers. And one of the key things that the, the classroom teachers, um, what we needed from the classroom teachers is if we're going to do any kind of, of research, we need consent from parents and from um, the children who are participating. And we were very reliant on the teachers to get those consent forms back. In some cases, we gathered um, information from a whole class of students and yet because of the lack of consent forms, we could only make use of two or maybe three data sets from that set of 26 questionnaires. And that was because the teachers hadn't really been engaged in the, um, in the research process. The second experience is one that um, we're just completing. Um, we, it's called the Children's Bone Study. And for this study, um, we, we took a, a very, very different, I took a very different approach. So I'm very fortunate that now I have somebody a bit more on the inside because my daughter is a um, primary school teacher and uh, um, very pleasingly is also very passionate about science. Um, and so she had a really good network of science teachers that she had participated in courses and, uh, and various activities with. And so she went out to her network of science teachers and then the teachers who were keen to participate um, in the, uh, the, the program that we were putting forward then took the lead and, um, and went to the principal and got permission to, um, to do so. And because the teachers were then highly invested, the whole process um, went much more smoothly and we had a great, um, we've had a great kind of participatory um, science um, um, project running um, both last year and this year and have recruited and involved over 700 um, years, five and six children. So it's been a very, it's been a very exciting um, experience and, and very informative. And it's made me realize that although from my point of view, the schools seem to be quite um, difficult to penetrate. I can see that from your point of view, the university must be an absolute mystery. And I think probably one of the first points of difference is that we don't have that very, very strict hierarchy that perhaps you're a little more accustomed to. We have um, a, a very kind of um, diffused management system um, as academics, particularly in terms of the research component of our work. So for most of us, our work consists of about half and half research and teaching. And as far as our research um, work is concerned, we're really very independent. So we can make decisions about what we do and don't get involved with um, you know, I, I um, this year I'm hosting two um, teachers on the um, science leadership program and um, have also hosted one two years ago in 2015. I don't have to ask anybody if I can do that. I just decide to do it and I do it. And that's the kind of freedom that we have. So um, for you to find scientists like myself who are interested in working with schools, I can see um, that that could actually be really, really difficult because there's not a clear um, line of communication. Um, and that's where I think that starting to establish networks and relationships such as um, happens with, um, with this program, um, and also programs where um, research funding is available because people in universities are always really, really interested in research funding, um, such as the, uh, what is it, the Curious Minds or the, um, the PSP program. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that, that does kind of draw people out and, uh, and, and 
um, stimulates the, the potential for conversation. But I think it would be fantastic if we had um, some kind of platform where, you know, the expressions of interest could be lodged and, and, uh, um, and shared. Um, I don't quite know what that would look like, um, but maybe there is the potential to build some kind of community. Um, to be honest, the coming from my side of the fence, um, probably I would only initiate contact if I was interested in actually conducting um, research that involved school children or something around schools. Um, but there might be other things that, that you as teachers were interested in um, that might attract my attention as well. But of course, I probably have other colleagues, not just in my department, which is nutrition, but um, in any other science areas where there could be a way um, for me to communicate with them, you know, lunch or even lunchroom conversations and, uh, and make them aware if they were interested of, of, you know, some kind of network or way of contacting. Um, I have to say that it's been great having um, my two teachers this um, this year, and I've learned a lot um, from them, um, and I hope that they've they've learned from their time with us as well. And um, so it is um, very much a, a two way relationship and uh, advantageous for both sides. Um, that's probably about as much as I wanted to say at this point. I'm happy to answer questions after. Thanks, Pam. Um, do you want to answer questions now or do you want to wait until we've heard from Johnny? Why don't we hear from Johnny and then we'll... Okay, then we can have a big um, mix up all together, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Johnny, are you, are you up for it? Uh, I think so. I'm going to try and put on my... Uh, I've got some little slides to talk to. I'll try and... Yeah. Put them up. I go like that. Oh, by the way, I'm recording this session for um, folk who aren't able to be here, so I hope you two don't mind. You okay with that? I, yep. uh, I'm fine with that. Does, can people see yep. that? <clears throat> That's good. Okay. Them, yeah. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll start. So, um, uh, well, yeah, I've been, I've been asked to, um, to talk about um, how you go about uh, developing relationships with, with, with the local scientific community. Um, <clears throat> that, that image there, I kind of stuck up there because uh, before I did the STLP, that's how I kind of felt about going out and, and, and approaching scientists to come, and, um, to come and kind of help me with my teaching. Um, I really didn't want to bother them. Uh, I thought they're enormously busy, um, and uh, I didn't want to be a pain in the neck. And I didn't really know where to start in terms of, uh, you know, if I if I had an interest from a student or a class, where I can where I kind of go. Um, uh, so the first thing I think is 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 to really encourage uh, uh, teachers as much as possible to get out and get interactions with with, with scientists in their classes. Um, it's just, it's, it's every experience I've, I've had has just been, uh, you know, absolutely fantastic in terms of the learning that's gone on. Um, uh, I think it's really important that, um, you know, uh, that, that students don't go through their entire secondary career, um, uh, even, even science students, without actually meeting a real scientist. Um, they, I think that little image there is, is, is a, lot, a lot of how um, a lot of our students uh, think scientists actually look like and behave. Um, and, and they're really quite surprised when they meet scientists in the flesh and realize they're just normal, everyday, average uh, human beings doing extraordinary things. Um, uh, it's, it's great because the scientists are much better uh, at articulating what they actually get up to during the day. There's that whole nature of science thing in terms of students understanding that scientists are about generating knowledge. They're not just these big receptacles of, of, of information um, that a lot of my younger students think that's, that's what scientists are. They're just professors and they do teaching. Um, they don't really do anything um, particularly practical. Um, all the scientists that, that, that I've been, um, uh, that I've worked with have been enormously enthusiastic um, about their particular, particular subjects. Um, a lot of them tell me they're just desperate for an opportunity to go and, and talk to a captured audience that can't get away from them. Um, and that, that enthusiasm rubs off on the students and a lot of them um, kind of pick up on, on kind of uh, uh, interests or pursuits um, from, from seeing people. 
um, that I don't, you know, information that I don't know anything about. They are. They absolutely are. Okay. Um, I, I can't. I can't. You know, I'm just. I'm just a, a science teacher. To get these specialists in, it's just. It's just fantastic for students to see, and that enthusiasm rubs off. Um, uh, to get an understanding of the breadth of scientific careers. Um, uh, again. Hey, doctor. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, and uh, also, you know, getting scientists then you start to develop um, uh, uh, kind of long really possible me. partnerships. Get with, um, Get me. If you're not, um, if if you're not actually talking, could you please make sure that you've muted your microphone because we're getting some um, noises off. So please mute your microphone if you're not actually talking. Sorry, Johnny, to interrupt, but um, carry on. Okay. okay. Um, and just those long term <laughs> partnerships. Um, they just have massive spin-offs. So you get you get one person in and it just starts spinning off and and, and all sorts of other interesting um, things pop up. Um, uh, scientists are actually, and, and Pam's a perfect example of this, um, you know, they're, they're really keen to get in and interact. Um, that, that whole thing that I was worried about in terms of just bothering them, it's, it's quite the opposite. Um, uh, they're absolutely passionate and they and they uh, about their fields and they really want to get in and, and, and kind of disseminate that information um, to their to their local community. Um, it's great PR for their organisations. Um, the schools provide an impressionable audience and that and that you know they're, they're really interested in talking to young kids and, and trying to um, switch them on to the, the to their particular uh, their suits and interests. Um, uh, and they're often obligated to to actually communicate. They they, they kind of sometimes I ring ring people up and say, listen, I'd really like you to come down and have a little chat about this. And I think, oh, that's fantastic because I'm just desperate to get some hours in because I'm I'm obligated to do some 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 uh, uh, some community outreach and I need to get my hours up. So that's a great opportunity. Thanks very much for for ringing. I'm actually really keen uh, uh, often for, for 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 teachers to to actually um, ring them up and ask them to to, to kind of come in. And the other thing is that. Um, uh, schools and, and bunches of students are, are a fantastic resource for, for all the community science um, uh, projects. Uh, we're a really great resource to, to, to get some, some, some research done for a, for a whole variety of, 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 uh, of projects. Um, so I think, um, and Pam mentioned it just before, um, how you go about building, it's, it's all uh, building relationships, it's all about building a network. That's, that's, that's what I think it is. It's just about getting out there as much as possible and interacting with people um, and it's just just getting involved in, in any facet of science it doesn't really matter um, both, both uh, uh, through your school but in your own time if you can um, your own interests and just talking to people and just that's that's how those relationships kind of blossom and bloom and um, lots of lots of things kind of uh, uh, happen when you start to do that so local community projects just going doing that and your own if you're interested and, and talking if this is to, uh, uh, to scientists if they're involved um, going to science lectures there's a whole lot of people there often uh, big big packs of scientists and you can go and introduce yourself and um, put yourself forward and just just kind of talk to people and just start to um, start, start to bump into people more and more often and, and people kind of get to know you and then they start ringing you up which is, which is fantastic um, joining kind of societies going to conferences um, at conferences, I always try and go and talk to the speakers afterwards. I'm one of those annoying people that stand in line, just shake their hand, just introduce myself. Um, uh, going to science PD sessions if they're offered, uh, if they're offered at school. And of course, you know, the STLP program, I encourage anybody that's listening that isn't doing it already to, to, to get on that uh, because it's just a fantastic opportunity to, to, to spread that network out. Um, a lot of organizations have educational outreach professionals, so they actually hire people um, who are sitting out of amount of time uh, uh, and, and doing that facilitation between science, scientists, science organizations and schools. Um, and, and, you know, we really need to get out there and find, find where those people are and, and kind of ring them up and, and, and get to know them because they get lots of opportunities. And if you know them and you've got a relationship already, then they're, they're, they're getting, um, they can get hold of you and, and, and you can become involved. Um, the other thing I think is really great to do uh, which I don't think is, is maybe done so often, is um, using, using the links that are already in the school. So finding out uh, whose parents, um, aunts, uncles, friends, all the rest of it, are, are actually scientists. Because often there's fantastic resources right at our fingertips that we don't, we don't actually know. I'm constantly surprised at what uh, people's parents do. And because the, the parents are engaged with the school community, um, you know, almost always, they're very happy to come down and have a bit of a chat um, uh, uh, to the students and, and spend their own time doing it. 
be because they've got some um, they've got some skin in the game. Um, cold calling is pretty pretty um, pretty tricky, but again, you can just just you know go go through and, and kind of call up, and and often uh, um, I'm kind of quite surprised at, at, at how frequently people are how scientists are to help. And of course, there's the um, citizen science projects you can go and find out about on the net and and kind of get hold of people and ask if you can um, uh, be involved in terms of curious minds and and PSP. Um, uh, <clears throat> I thought I'd uh, uh, talk about a few of the, the things I've been involved, just as kind of examples, because um, I really want to get across, you know, it's just about um, getting out there, it's, 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 it's meeting people, talking to them, you never know how those relationships are, uh, uh, what, they, what they're going to turn into. So when I was at uh, um, Cawthron, uh, there was a, a chap that came in for lunch, um, he was French, <coughs> his name was Colin Barn, um, and he was involved with this project called um, uh, Plankton Planet, um, and it involved getting hold of the Tara, which is a yacht um, that uh, uh, Sir Peter Blake used to, uh, uh, Sir Peter Blake was in, um, and it, they got hold of it and turned into a lab, um, Colin Barn and, his, and a bunch of scientists, they went around the world and they collected up a hold of uh, samples of plankton, um, they travel around the world twice, and they crunched it all, and they got a whole um, a whole edition of uh, Science magazine. Um, it was was a massive amount of research. Um, it was really really incredibly exciting. Um, and uh, since then, they've been uh, wondering how to go about it, and they've developed a, a citizen science project where they get sailors around the world, um, just families who are sailing around, um, because. Uh, uh, they can't afford to keep doing that. It's, it's something like $100,000 a day for a, for, a, for a yacht, for a research vessel. Um, so they thought if they got people who were, who were sailing around already, um, then they could uh, actually collect the plankton for them and send it off, um, and they could crunch all the data and see what kind of species are out there and how they're changing. Um, and so they started to do that, and that's a really successful model. And then, um, so Columban came along to the Cawthron. He was there for lunch. He was meeting uh, one of the scientists there. And I was at uh, UCLP, so I, I, I um, uh, said, could I come along to lunch? And I met him. Um, and uh, we had lunch together and with some other scientists. And just, I didn't think anything much of it. I was having a chat to him. Um, and then when I came back to school, uh, I got a phone call um, from the, the outreach person there. Um, and she said uh, that, Plankton Planet was going to have a, a symposium up in Auckland and would I like to come along just to kind of uh, um, uh, sit in the background and I, I went and saw the uh, uh, the, the uh, senior management team and said could I have a couple of days off to go up there and they said yes because they're really fantastic and very supportive and went up there it was this huge pack of, of world famous scientists. Uh, there's an image there of uh, Manu Prakash, he's the chap who's done the, uh, the foldoscopes um, and the uh, and the, uh, the the paper centrifuges, um, absolutely fascinating man. Um, and I got to hang out with him for about about three or four days. Um, but there was the, one of the best uh, climate change models in the world. He turned up. Um, there was uh, 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 a lady from an organisation called um, the Big Blue Network. She travels all around the world, um, uh, getting people involved with with education around oceans. There was a professor from Stanford. Um, there was there were people from MIT. It was just this big pack um, of people, and um, you know from those I, I, I got to just from from going out to lunch with Colin Van back in little old Nelson in New Zealand, um, uh, and just putting my hand up and 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 going along. I got to hang out with these uh, with these absolutely fantastic world class scientists, and um, uh, uh, now I'm going to use the foldoscopes in my class and stick them on Manu's website. Um, uh, one of the guys there was uh, he's like a National Geographic guy. Um, he gave me a big poster and I'm going to put it in my classroom. He wants a photo of it, so I've got a, a kind of link with him. I can kind of ring him up, maybe Skype or something like that. And it's just it's just bumping into people um, and and exploiting those those relationships as as, as much as much as possible. Um, I, I really do think it's all about networking and uh, serendipity and, and and making the most of uh, most of experiences. Also, I just wanted to say, um, uh, I, I kind of agree with Pam. Um, it's, I think it's quite difficult for teachers and uh, and the science community to, 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 to kind of uh, get together. There's, there's there needs to be some kind of uh, we don't have it here in New Zealand. Maybe nobody has it around the world. But some kind of facilitation between between the two would be would be really nice. If um, I think in the Gluckman report they talked about it. Uh, you know, our our job as teachers, we're very very busy. 
Um, we're trying to teach all day. We don't really have a lot of spare time to go around um, doing what I've just suggested we, we all do. Uh, puts a lot of pressure on us. And likewise, likewise scientists, um, it's, it's, you know, they're very busy doing their research. It would be nice to have some kind of uh, intermediary, um, some kind of facilitators um, uh, as part of the science plan for the entire country that could, uh, that could coordinate that. Um, uh, yeah, how's that? There we go. Thanks, Johnny. Um, sorry, I, I sort of drifted off a little bit there. Um, I, I thought you were going to go on to talk about the other things on that slide, but... Um, oh, oh I, can, I can do. I just thought, how, how's that for time? Probably probably talked enough, I, have I? That's up to you. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be interested to hear, you know, very briefly about the other things that you've got on the slide, because look, they look quite interesting. Okay, um, just really quickly, um, with, with the Cawthron, we organised a, um, a catchment project with the Year 10 class. Um, so we got the class out. Um, it's like a catchment for a for a um, for an estuary, uh, and we tried to get in quite a few different strings all at the same time. So there's an organisation called um, uh, Experiencing Marine Reserves, and um, uh, oh, I can see I've just um, there's something wrong with my slide. It's all right. Uh, Experiencing Marine Reserves. Uh, and we got some some of the students out doing a doing an essay um, snorkeling because because that organisation organises it. Um, we got scientists in, uh, and the kids were doing uh, another essay in the, in the mud flats. Uh, we got some local iwi in to talk about the history of the area. Um, and what we're doing is trying to get the students to collate a whole lot of data around um, uh, biological data around uh, uh, around the quality of the water coming down the river. Um, and uh, who that actually, or how that actually affects um, a whole lot of different uh, um, groups of, of, of people, uh, from the mussel farm out in the harbour to the uh, kayakers, uh, to the to the um, kayakers that are on the Abel Tasman there, um, uh, to uh, people who are who are fishing off the off the shore, um, and just try to tie it all together. Um, and just lots of people was, was quite a bit of organization, but but everybody very happy to to kind of come along and do that um, and and bring all those 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 links in together um, and, and that's had lots of spin-offs afterwards in terms of being able to ring people up after meeting them and doing that and just saying, could you just pop in and do this and then you know because you've already got a relationship with them um, that, that they're very happy to do that and it's much easier. Um, just had the uh, 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 the Morris Wilkins Center people down. Um, and we did an absorb uh, fructose absorption study um, with uh, with a year nine class. Um, so they were they were testing. Uh, it's a it's a nationwide study. They needed some students. Um, uh, when I was at uh, uh, the Cawthron, um, and just afterwards uh, developed a relationship with um, uh, Peter Shepherd. Uh, uh, he's a he's a professor at Auckland University and. Um, he actually uh, uh, sent me an email and said, would you like to be involved? I didn't actually know about it um, and said, yeah, sure thing. And um, so they turned up and they tested all the, uh, we, we took a couple of classes off. The students had to um, fast overnight and um, then uh, they had a big drink of horrible fructose um, sugar. And then we tested their absorption study by looking at how much hydrogen gas they um uh, produced out of their breath when they when they breathed out. Kids loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It's really interesting. Um, and some kids were very high fructose absorbers, and some were very low fructose absorbers. And there's ramifications for that. So they were really really interested in that. Um, we did a year 13 muscle investigation with the Cawthron, um, where the students go in, and it's it's the uh, biology 3.1. If there's any biology teachers out there, um, and the students were doing uh, investigations on muscles um, at a at a wet lab. Uh, so that, that's, that's again through those links through Cawthron, but it involves, we got speakers in from NMIT because they have an aquaculture course, so they were talking to the kids, and then next door is SPAT New Zealand, so the kids go and visit the, the scientists at SPAT New Zealand because that's where they, they generate up all the, all the SPAT um, nationally for, for, for mussel farms. Um, another really good, co you know, cohesive kind of lots of, lots of little prongs there, getting the students to, um, uh, uh, to kind of realise uh, what what science is actually about getting uh, generating new information and there's actually people that do this for a job full time um, and just exposing them to, to to real people doing doing real science 
uh, there's a chap who does marine studies with the University of Otago in Nelson. We got him for a, for a shark week. He, he brought in a whole lot of sharks for dissection, um, had various shark machines and stuff like that. It was just awesome. Again, he just kind of rang up through previous, um, uh, previous relationships because he knew we'd be keen. Um, and just today, actually, just got a ring from um, uh, someone at the Brook. We've got a little sanctuary that's staying up in Nelson. You may have heard about it in the news because um, they're uh, 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 throwing poison around and some people aren't very, very happy about it. Um, but he just rang me up and he said he's got a, a project coming up. And because I'd um, been down there and talked to him last year uh, when they had a, um, a bio blitz and I kind of helped with the bio blitz at night time and kind of kind of hung out with him for a while, he just, because he'd known that, he, he just, he's got this new project and he, and he came in and said, I just thought he might be interested. So it's just about networking, making, making connections um, and things just start to happen and they start to spark each other, uh, uh, off each other. Okay, how's that, Michael? Wonderful. So, um, do you get any time to teach? Pardon? Do you get any time to teach? Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank, thank you hopefully, hopefully there's a little bit of education and all the, and all those things there for the, for the for the kids yeah it's great it sounds wonderful um okay let's throw it open um any questions or thoughts or ideas that people have that they want to um run past these two guys don't forget to switch on your microphone if you want to say something otherwise we can't hear you <laughs> Johnny, if you t switch off your uh, screen share, we might be able to see everybody who's on. Yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. How do you envisage um, this uh, networking or this facilitation of relationships between schools and uh, organizations? What do you think would happen? Would you like me to answer that? You could start. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go. Um, so, what, what, personally, what I what I'd like to see is um, uh, uh, when when government funding comes out, that that part of that funding is is tied to to educational outreach. That's what I would like to see. And then there might be some money out there for um, uh, 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 kind of facilitators between um, between the science community and the and the school community. I feel like I feel like you know. Both of us are kind of too busy, really, to do it to do it properly, and there needs to be kind of a, a third intermediary party in there that, that that's paid to do it that can help us get together and find links and 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 organise and facilitate it. That's what I'd like to see. But um, yeah. can I just add to that? Is that if I can I comment? It's Sharon here. Go, Sharon. Okay, just from my experience with uh, I've been involved in three different participatory science projects and I agree that it's really difficult as a teacher the first one I was the coordinator and it was way beyond my own experience doing all the, the budgeting for the project and and um, I had to kind of drive it and lead and pull the scientists in to help me uh, but through that was definitely the connections made connections with Barbara Anderson and the MothNet uh, project which led to more contact with scientists etc and then we've recently been involved with a touchstone project uh, monitoring water quality, which is from um, Chris Arbuckle, who's at Tarago University. But I really feel that there is uh, a need for some kind of role of a science facilitator who can maybe work with scientists, with organisations, because all the scientists that I've worked with are very, very keen and have loved working with primary school aged children. They've been blown away by how much they can actually do, their enthusiasm, their knowledge. Um, and I think it's the way to a really great initiative just to we're getting involved with as much participatory science as we can uh, not just through the PSP but having a look at what's out there in our community and what's needed and it's really taking the whole school now we're getting behind it a little bit and just looking out for other opportunities that they can get involved with but I think if we want to work in a really systematic way with scientists it would it would be great to have someone who could maybe facilitate in each region and have people, um, you know, a networker or a hierarchy almost of um, who we can go to for help and how we can connect. It's, it is about connections and, and you need someone who can help people make those connections from my point of view. And, and I think as teachers as well, you know, you, you get, um, you get someone who, who, who goes for it and they, and they make a hold of connections, they make a hold of stuff happen and then they burn out and then they go away somewhere on holiday in Fiji 
and all those connections are lost. They're, they're, they're gone, which is, a, which is a real shame. Yeah, I agree. I think the, um, the universities, um, I mean, that I'm not really familiar with so much with the commercial science um, institutions or, or companies, but certainly within the universities, as, um, as Johnny mentioned, we do have those outreach people who, um, right. whose, whose role is to promote the university and the university's products, if you like, um, to mainly to secondary schools. Um, they could be, perhaps, um, the universities could play a role in, in actually using the people in, in that position to contribute more, but I'm not, um, I, I don't know how well that would, that would work. I wonder if it needs to be sort of quite a standalone, sort of um, well-managed database or something, I, some kind of platform. It's hard to envisage what it, but surely in this these, this day and age with technology, we should be able to make something like that work. Mm -hmm. Certainly welcome other ideas from people, comments. I think it's only you and me, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> and me. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jen. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ashik has just typed that um, Future and Tech coordinate um, the networking between schools and sort of science, well, scientists and people who work in science and technology really well. Um, Obviously, Ashik has used them, and, and I've used them too. I personally haven't had great experiences with the actual individual people, but the, the actual future and tech organisation itself is, is a really good resource. What kind, of, what kind of experience have you had? Is it Alexandra Tava? Is that, is that right? That's me. <laughs> what, what, what kind of experience did you have, just out of interest? Um, I think we just had, um, and, and we do understand that they're not teachers, but we had sort of some some talks from from scientists that, that could have been interesting, but just sort of the kids weren't engaged, and that could have yeah. been to do with, you know, the age of the kids as well, maybe not quite pitched at the right level. Yeah. I think that's really important from our point of view to have, I mean, we have no understanding, you know, really of what's the right level. I mean, I know the first time my daughter asked me to go and speak, be the visiting scientist, um, to go and speak to, uh, to her year five class, um, she had to give me quite a lot of coaching before I went. She said, you know, you can't just stand up and, and talk to a PowerPoint for 50 minutes the way you do, usually. You've got, you've got to um, approach this quite differently. And... Uh, I had to think a lot harder and I was actually quite nervous <laughs> about the whole process, but it was wonderful. And um, I think it was Sharon who said that it's incredible what the, what the kids took in and I didn't really expect it. I think that's somewhere the... support is good. Sorry, where, where, I think it's somewhere where a, um, a, a facilitator who's used to um, talking to people on both ends um, can help sort of mm, that's right yeah help communication between the two yeah and I think that's one of the great things that the STLP um, kind of starts to form that link between the two so well because we've had a place there for six months so obviously we're in education as well anyway but forging those links and almost it's like being a translator between the two different professions in a way and forging those links so I think if we were to look at some kind of facilitator role from my point of view as a primary school teacher well I'd be putting my hand up to do it but um, I think it's <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know an, an educator who has also had some experience in working with scientists that would be, yeah. would be top of the list for that kind of role really so bring it on I say. <laughs> Isn't it called the Science Translation and Leadership Programme? Sorry? 
isn't it called the Science Translation and Leadership Programme? No, it's science <laughs> teaching, but yeah, that we could add the, that. That could be the same. <laughs> How are we doing? Anybody else got anything they want to say? Well, I've really enjoyed this. Um, are there any final things that um, you two presenters want to say? I've, I've really enjoyed listening to you. I've, I've learned a lot. Johnny, have you got any final words of wisdom? Um, not uh, no, I, th I think I've said everything I, I kind of uh, I, I kind of wanted to. Um, I'm, I'm good, thanks, Michael. And Pam, I'd just like to know if we're going to have a, a point of action here now that we've come up with um, identifying the need. Who's going to take it further? Is this the Royal Society? I think um, Rad can maybe put uh, put a note up there saying, is this the, is this a role for the Royal Society? I think, I think yeah I think maybe we we could um I I could take note of the people who are on here and maybe start a a, um, a Google doc or something like that that people can share ideas on if that if that seems appropriate I noticed that um both Jen and Joanna aren't here anymore so um we don't have the Royal Society in person do we can I just suggest um, Vic Metcalf, I'm sure, would be really interested in what we're thinking about. She's the coordinator of the PSP projects and has those connections between um, the, the three pilot areas so far between the scientists or the, um, yeah, I think she would be interested in if we we're having some kind of discussion or looking at it further, she probably has some interesting things to add to that. Could you send me her contact information and I can include her on the um, Google Sure. Doc. Yep, definitely. Thanks. Okay. How are we doing? Are we all ready to, um, to pack up for the session? Just, um, I'm not sure how many people have been on one of these before. I was wondering whether this timing works for people or whether you prefer it later on in the evening because we, this is the first one we've had at this time. It's usually been about half past seven. Does this work all right for people or would people prefer later? I prefer this time. Who was that? Sorry. That was Kat. I really enjoyed listening. Okay, jolly good. Like this All time, right. yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. This time works fairly well for me as well. Okay, good. Are people mainly at their school still, or have you got home? Home. Oh, uh, oh, school. Yeah. School, jolly good. Mixture. Okay. Still at work. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll love you and leave you, and um, go and finish my cup of tea. And try and work out went wrong what went wrong with my um, audio but um thanks a lot and uh take care look after yourself and enjoy your science thanks, cheers Michael. thanks bye -bye. Michael. bye everybody bye bye, bye. 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 thank you